Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy. Um, we do interrupt your regular Pokemon Go playing for uh, some Autodesk information here. Um, so uh, today we're doing uh, the desktop application basics. So um, the reason we're doing this uh, presentation, you might ask, you know, like, why desktop application? Why not something like, um, you know, Inventor Tube and Pipe or Cable Harness or something like that? Um, the reason we are doing this is because um, our Lifeline team, which both myself and Jose are on, um, get a couple questions a week um, in regards to the desktop application. Um, people trying to install service packs, um, people not being able to install the desktop application properly, um, people wondering what happened to their um, application manager. And uh, we definitely want to address a lot of those issues today um, and show you, you know, exactly what the desktop app can do because it's, uh, it's very robust in regards to uh, its capabilities. So I'm um, going to go ahead and introduce Jose here. Jose is one of our application engineers here at Kativ. Uh, we do work on the same team, the Lifeline team at Kativ. Um, and uh, I do notice a lot of people here in the uh, attendees are our Lifeline customers. So hello, um, everyone. We've worked on a couple of your cases before. Uh, and that's it. So if you do have any questions for this uh, particular webcast, go ahead and type them into your GoToWebinar chat box, which is uh, on the side of your GoToWebinar panel. And we'll definitely uh, go ahead and cover that uh, during the session if we feel necessary or at the end uh, as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Jose, and we'll go, go, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, so Jose? Uh, thanks, Nigel. So like Nigel said, I am part of the Lifetime team here at Kativ, um, application engineer. I have worked with some uh, of you in attendance here, just working on your cases. And if I have them with you, I'm sorry. I'm doing this virtual academy, and then I'll get back <laughs> to it. Um, but today, we're going to talk about the desktop application and some of the, the basic functions that it has. Um, so when we think of the desktop application, what is it, what does it do, and how to take uh, full advantage of its capabilities. Okay, um, so let's start with uh, what it is. Uh, the desktop application, like Nigel said, uh, one of the questions that comes up is what happened to my application manager? And that's uh, because the application manager was replaced by the desktop application. And uh, it was replaced because they do uh, some of the same uh, things. Um, which is keep you up to date and keep your software running smoothly and uh, having you um, use it as uh, it was intended to. Uh, it does this by downloading and installing uh, updates, service packs, and hotfixes that Autodesk releases for certain software that uh, avoids bugs or crashes that may have come with the initial release of a software. And uh, it doesn't only keep you up to date, it helps you get ahead. And when I say this, it uh, I mean that it brings learning straight to your desktop. I'll go more into that uh, in a little while. But it also helps you improve uh, your future experiences with the software, uh, not only the desktop application, but the software that you have installed on your uh, computer, such as AutoCAD or Inventor. Uh, with that said, uh, we can move forward to a basic window of the desktop application. And uh, I'll go back to the improving of future experiences. And I say that because at, on the top uh, right corner, you'll see a feedback button. And Autodesk has uh, incorporated that into the desktop application uh, for a quick, uh, a quick way to give them notice of any problems that you're seeing. And when I say uh, problems, I mean crashes, like I mentioned earlier, or bugs, or uh, just freezes that you may experience with your software that haven't been addressed yet. Um, I also talk about the interface that you have with the desktop app. Uh, sometimes, say, you have an issue with the downloading of the software and installation. Go ahead and give that feedback back to Autodesk, and they'll, it'll start the process of them addressing it. If nobody uh, tells them that something's happening, there's no way they can address it. Um, you can also find here on the left-hand side is the software that you have installed on your computer. Here you'll see AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and Revit, uh, the icon showing there. And at the bottom you see uh, it labeled as navigation bar. And that's because you can expand it and not have to decipher what icon is for which. It'll give you the titles of the, of the software. And in the middle you'll see the, where the updates would be if, you, uh, if, in this case, AutoCAD wasn't up to date. It'll give you the list of the updates as well as the order they should be installed with and a small blurb of what the hotfix addresses, as well as a, a link to the readme, which has more detail about it. 
And um, at the below that, you'll see my second point of getting ahead. And that's uh, the learning videos and the learning articles that Autodesk has incorporated with the desktop, desktop app. And um, it gives you not only basics, but it gives you, in some cases, uh, some advanced functions that you may not have known that AutoCAD had in this case. Or it gives you some articles that you can uh, read over while you're installing your software. And um, just to, to get ahead of the game here with your software and use it as smoothly as you can. Definitely. Um, and uh, we did talk to Michael Mizuno, who happens to be one of the, uh, the project managers at uh, Autodesk for AutoCAD specifically. And uh, what, he's, uh, what he mentioned is he's going to go, they're going to go ahead and start releasing, um, not, they're going to move to a, a system in which they release um, not one huge uh, update every year, but, you know, smaller ones every, you know, six months or so, um, kind of less invasive, if you may. Um, and those updates, uh, he said, are going to be in the desktop application when they come out. So that's something to note as well. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. Yeah, so uh, that's the basic overview of what the window will look like. But uh, before you actually go uh, and get the desktop application, uh, you, there are some things you should consider, some questions that the customers actually ask us uh, to make sure that they're doing it properly or they, they should do it. And one of them is, what software does it update or does it pick up? And uh, the answer to this one is actually, any software that is released, uh, that is 2015 release or newer, will actually get their updates from the desktop application. So if you're using 2014, 2013, anything older, it might be a best practice to just keep the application manager for the moment until you're ready to upgrade, update uh, your software to the newer releases. Definitely, and and just because you have the desktop application on your computer doesn't mean you can't update those earlier software versions. Um, you can always, uh, you know, just Google uh, AutoCAD Service Pack 2014, um, and it'll send you to the Autodesk page with those Service Pack downloads on them. Um, that's another way to do it. It just happens to be a little bit easier when it's you know right on your desktop ready to go. Yeah, yeah, and that's why one of the things that Autodesk had in mind when they implemented this, just not having. Uh, to make the users go out and find the updates, have the updates come to them. Mm -hmm. If you do have any questions in regards to how to find updates, um, if you don't want to use the desktop app, um, you can feel free to give us a call here at Lifeline and we'll uh, definitely get you taken care of. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another question that actually comes up is what, what are the differences between the application manager and the desktop app? And one of the major differences, and it's something that I like uh, when it went over to the desktop app, is that, as you saw earlier, it separates your updates by the software. So it, uh, in the application manager, it actually just gave you a list of the updates, uh, a small you know, description, and the readme. So you weren't exactly sure uh, if you had more updates to that specific software or if, um, if there was any order specifically to install them. And with the desktop app, like I said, you can just view the AutoCAD updates or the AutoCAD LT updates and focus on those first if those are the, the ones that you use most. Um, and another difference that we see here is that, um, like I said, the update has more information. It gives you a small paragraph, a small blurb that you can see uh, for the hotfix uh, as to what it addresses. And if there is any um, urgency with that, you can hold off maybe a couple days. Maybe uh, you don't want to deal with it yet. Uh, that's perfectly fine because now you know exactly what it addresses. But it also gives you uh, the README as well. So that's one of the one of the things that a desktop app has introduced, as well as um, I mentioned earlier, those learning videos. There is also the ability, just in case with an update, there is a video that was released or an article that Autodesk has written and uh, given to the users, it can be linked to that update and you can watch it straight from your desktop app. And um, one of the final differences that we see here is the ability to sign in with your Autodesk account. And I know for some contract managers that we have on here, it gives you the ability to sign in to the desktop application, stay signed in, and have a direct link to your account. Now, your account portal has your users, your software that you need to download as, as far as actual, uh, not updates or service packs, but actual software. And it's a quick link that you have directly on the desktop app that you can access. Yep. You can get your serial numbers there. Um, you know, you can even generate license files if you're, you're in a network environment as well. Yep. So uh, now that we went over some of the concerns that you may have before you update, 
we get to what I think th is the easiest part of uh, this presentation, and it's actually updating your, your software. Uh, if you still have your application manager um, and you try to look up an update or check for updates, it'll actually won't show you your software update. It'll tell you that application itself has an update. Uh, it'll tell you that it's going to the desktop app. It'll tell you some of the changes that you'll see and then it'll give you the option to actually update your software on the spot. And once you click that update button, it'll actually download desktop application and install it, um, which brings another question that um, is brought up by our customers is what happened to the application manager? And um, if you have a desktop app, it does uninstall your application manager just to avoid any conflict between them because it is being replaced by it. Definitely, and um, we do get. I have gotten a couple of questions just this week in support um, regarding people having desktop applications that don't show any software, or the software disappears, or they never had it in the first place. You'll have, you know, you'll have an entire suite of software on your computer, um, and the desktop app won't show any of it. Um, a lot of this occurs um, because of your computer's antivirus. We've seen it a couple of times actually, um, where the antivirus will actually stop the desktop application from. Um, from understanding what software you have on your computer and reaching the cloud to find um, the updates. So um, if you are having that issue, uh, what I would do is I would uninstall the desktop app um, and reinstall it with your, uh, with your antivirus off. Um, you can go ahead and turn it on again afterwards, but uh, you know, best practice is anytime you're installing any Autodesk software, um, downloading or installing Autodesk software, um, is go ahead and turn your antivirus off for a short period of time because it definitely does mess with some uh, some installs, we see that a lot. Um, if you are still running into issues, go ahead and call us Lifeline team um, and we'll make sure you're taken care of. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, something uh, we were going to mention. It's, it's always best practices. Uh, whenever you're installing Autodesk uh, software, just temporarily turn off your antivirus. It'll go, it'll make your install go a lot faster, first of all, and it'll also stop any corruption that, uh, with the files that may happen during the installation. So once you do have your desktop application up and running, it'll look something like this. As you can see here, I have some software installed on my computer, uh, which I need to, to support some of our customers here. Um, this updates tab right here actually brings um, all of the updates that I currently have available. As you can see, I have some A360, some AutoCAD, and some, some Recap. Um, but I just want to focus on my AutoCAD because I know I, I help a lot of our customers with that. So I click on this tab here and I know the icon, but like I mentioned earlier, we can expand that and it'll give us the list of our software. So close that back up. And here you see um, the hotfix number three that we have for AutoCAD 2016. Um, it gives me the option to update. So it's as easy as uh, clicking that update button. In this case, I already have it downloaded. So it's asking me for permission to install it. I go ahead and tell it yes. And it starts the installation process. Here I can show you my Windows installer. And while it's loading, while it's installing, uh, this one's a pretty fast uh, install. But I can go ahead and start browsing through the learning videos and the learning articles. Uh, as you can see here, it gives you a create text and dimensions video. And it gives us an overview of the 2017 uh, AutoCAD, which I also have installed but uh, just to get more familiar with it. And these aren't the only videos, as you can see. Uh, we have the option to view more, uh, more videos and more articles uh, that may benefit us. But um, like I said, in some cases, it does take a little longer to install. This, and in this case, it's a hotfix, pretty small. Uh, it went through, uh, installation was uh, successful. Click OK, and the update disappears. And this is what happens when your software is completely up to date. It show you no updates. Uh, you'll just have the ability to, to navigate to those videos and those articles. Definitely. And we know a lot of you are early adopters. Um, well, it's not even early anymore. It's actually like normal um, to go to the 2017 versions of the software. Um, just to note, if you don't, if you haven't already, um, there are th actually three AutoCAD 2017 hotfixes, and there's already one for Inventor Professional. Um, so if that's something you haven't uh, installed yet, um, go ahead and do so. It can definitely get rid of some of those common bugs that they found after the release um, that can uh, you know, mess with your software a little bit. So if you want to avoid those things, go ahead and install those hotfixes. Yeah, and uh, that's one of the reasons we did this, this special uh, or different uh, virtual academy. It's just to keep our customers up and running smoothly. As we go into our summary, uh, you are able to, once you 
download that desktop app, you're able to, to view your available updates, keep that software running smoothly, having it do what it was meant to do, what you downloaded for, and what you purchased the, the suite or the, the software itself for. Um, you're able to learn more about the software, like I said, with those learning videos and learning articles uh, to do functions that maybe you weren't aware of, uh, aware of were added to a new version of it. Uh, you can learn about it and uh, start implementing it into your workflow. And uh, the last thing is influencing future releases. Like I said, uh, it, that feedback button is uh, available to you. It's right there. If no one reports any bugs or uh, crashes, um, there's no way to, for auditors to start that process of uh, releasing hotfixes or service packs in order to keep that software doing what it's supposed to. Um, with that in mind, some of our next recommended next steps is actually updating your application manager. If we went through the questions, the, the common questions that you had and you seem to be okay on all those fronts, go ahead and update that application manager to the desktop app. Uh, start downloading your, your software, your, your updates, your service packs, and your hotfixes um, just to keep uh, everything running smoothly. Even if you haven't run into that issue, uh, it's possible that you may in the future and that way you can get ahead of it. Um, with that in mind, I think we have some time here for uh, some questions, uh, some Q&A that I'm going to pass over to Nigel for some questions that may have come in during the presentation. Definitely. Um, we do have a couple of questions in regards to people's um, specific installs, um, and some people having some issues with the desktop app. Um, I'd just like to remind you, um, if you are running into issues, um, you can most certainly go ahead and email us, lifelineactive.com, or call that number, um, and we'll definitely get you up and running in regards to the desktop application. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the common issues that we're seeing are, um, you know, my desktop application or my desktop application is installed. It's not showing any applications, or it's not showing the applications I have installed on my computer. Um, there's a couple of ways to troubleshoot that. Um, another big one that you know, a couple of questions have actually come in is. Um, I go ahead and click update on my app, uh, my application manager, and it's not showing me anything. Um, Jose, do you have an answer for that? So I guess um, you know if you or if you don't have the desktop app yet, and you have your application manager up, um, and you go ahead and click look for updates, and it's not finding the desktop app, um, how do you go about getting it? So there's a, a couple reasons, um, a couple ways that question can go. Uh, like I said, there's different ways to troubleshoot it, but one being once you uh, click update on your on your application manager and nothing happens. It happened to me the other day. I was trying to trying to update my desktop app, but it just takes a little while sometimes to actually download the, the desktop application and install that. Or you, uh, in some cases, you check for updates and it doesn't give you the option to update your desktop app. And uh, in that case, we do have a way to work around that, but um, it is a, a tedious process just to, to troubleshoot it at first. So if that is something that's happening to you, go ahead and give us a call, and we'll definitely work with you to get your desktop up, app up and running. Definitely. Um, don't want to keep you guys from getting your, uh, your updates in. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, and Rick asked a couple of questions about his particular install, um, but he asked one that was uh, a little more generalized that I think we can share with everybody else. Um, if you're having issues with your desktop app and you do need to uninstall it, it's not found in the same place. Um, to uninstall as your other Autodesk products. Um, for the most part, you use the Autodesk uninstall tool to get rid of um, you know, products like Inventor, AutoCAD, um, Revit, etc. Um, you can actually uninstall a desktop application only through your Windows uninstaller. So that's in like Programs and Features in your control panel, and you can remove your desktop app in there um, if you need to reinstall it. Um, Andy Johnson. Hi, Andy. How's it going? Um, he asked, uh, can I hide updates that I do not want to install? Mine also shows full programs that I do not want. Um, example, AutoCAD Electrical 2017. Um, so Andy, it does show all of the products that are installed on your machine. Um, if you don't want them to show those particular updates for those products, I don't think you can hide them. I think the only way to hide them is to not have that product on your computer. Um, so if you know AutoCAD Electrical is something that you're not using, um, you can go ahead and uninstall it, I guess. Um, use the regular uh, AutoCAD or sorry, the Autodesk uninstall tool. If you just go ahead and hit your Microsoft button, I think Jose, do you mind showing that real quick? Yeah. Um, just go into the uninstall tool for Autodesk because um, this happens a lot. Um, 
if you use the Windows uninstaller for uh, some Autodesk applications, it does leave some uh, residual information behind, and that can, um, if say you've had a corrupted installation, um, the things that it leaves behind could mess up your, you know, your new installation. So, so. what Nigel was talking about is the uninstall uh, tool here. I know we, uh, if we've worked with you on getting uh, rid of some of your older software, we've uh, used this method because it's the recommended method just because it gets rid of anything that is uh, related to, to the certain software that you're installing. Yeah, definitely. Excuse me, you're uninstalling. If, you, if, you're, if you're having issues with any of this stuff, like I said, you can go ahead and call us um, or email us, lifelineactive.com. I, I notice a lot of you already do um, that are on this call right now. So, uh, you know, we're working on your cases. Uh, <laughs> we're not just doing webcasts all day for sure. Um, let's see here. It looks like I've got some uh, specific questions for some people. Um, let's see. Another question from Andy. I do not have nor ever had Electrical 2017 on my computer. Andy's software coordinator. So um, I can look at your specific situation, Andy. Um, go ahead and uh, go ahead and just shoot us an email, um, and we'll go ahead and take care of that after this. Um, and then I can go ahead and ask Autodesk if there's anything they can hide. Because you're a software coordinator, it might show um, some other stuff. I haven't actually tested it on that end um, in regards to that. So that's something we're going to have to look into a little deeper, and uh, we'll figure out that. Yeah, um, like I said, these experiences uh, sometimes with contract managers, you'll be able to, to view your users, your software, your uh, serial numbers, but as well as software coordinators, like Nigel said. But if you're just a regular user, you'll, you'll see your privileges. You'll see a, a different account portal. Um, so sometimes that will affect your desktop app a little differently. Andy, and that could be what's happening here. And that's uh, it's, if you're the software coordinator for that software, it could be uh, what's happening. There you go. Um, and then uh, looks like Eric here asks, um, I missed the first 10 minutes. Um, is there going to be a recording of this so I can watch it later? So yes. Um, there will be a recording of this. It's actually being recorded right now. Um, we'll definitely get this up on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Um Go ahead and uh, go there. You can see all of our other videos, especially some of our um, special webcasts that you might not be um, subscribed to because they're not you know, part of the AVA grouping. Um, along those same lines, uh, we do have a webcast tomorrow. Um, we've done a couple of perpetual license changes webcasts. Um, in regards to like the introduction to the industry collections, which is what's replacing suites, um, as well as the changes to Autodesk licensing, uh, specifically the end of perpetual licenses. Um, a lot of people on this call do have perpetual licenses. Um, if that's something you need to see again or you haven't seen yet, go ahead and uh, make note of it either in the questions panel or in the poll afterwards. I'll definitely get you an invite to that webcast tomorrow at 10. Let's see. Um, Mike asks, how does the desktop app work with updating Vault on a separate server? So I, um, and we're, I think you're talking about your, your Vault server, your ADMS. Um, I think when you install ADMS, it does install the desktop app onto there. I, I'm not 100% sure on whether or not it installs the ADMS, um, so for those Vault service packs. Because um, I know the server service pack and the client service pack um, are not necessarily the same download. Um, that's something I'm going to have to look into, Mike. Uh, I'll get back to you on that later. I actually haven't used the desktop app to update a vault yet. Um, usually, I just have those files on my uh, my flash drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's uh, something we want to be a little more cautious with ADMS. Uh, you know, updating service packs and so forth. It, it may cause uh, some some downtime. So you want to choose exactly when you want to do it. So you know, if you you're having some questions with that as well as to when you should do it or how you should uh, do it properly. Just go ahead and call Kativ Lifeline. We'll we'll be here um, just to give you some guidance on what are the best practices to do that. Yeah, and I'll get in touch with you, Mike. I've talked to you before. Um, I'll I'll get in touch with you after this, um, and I'll I'll test that on my end, um, and we'll see if I can get some uh, some Vault service packs up and running. So, like I said, um, there are service pa or there's already hot fixes for AutoCAD and Inventor 2017. This is the two most popular programs among the viewer base here. Um, go ahead and get those installed. Uh, they have fixed a lot of problems that we've seen with our customers. Um, also, graphics drivers have been a huge thing, especially on Windows 10. Just letting you guys know. Um, completely unrelated to the topic. But uh, if you are having any issues with um, your program crashing, or um, you know, even periodically, or you know, um, just sluggishness, 
Um, it could be something in relation to your graphics driver, especially on Windows 10 machines. Uh, Autodesk hasn't tested them all, so not all of them are certified. We'll definitely let you know which ones are um, and get that on your machine for you. Yeah, uh, in most cases it's because some of the some of the graphics drivers were actually updated very recently in late June. So some problems that may have started occurring recently, go ahead and check your graphics driver. Uh, make sure that it is up to date. Um, I know in some cases we haven't updated it since you installed it when you first got the computer. So make sure that you have those uh, up Definitely. To date. And it becomes a bigger issue as people, you know, um, your computer keeps yelling at you. It's like, oh, update to Windows 10, update to Windows 10, update to Windows 10. And that those graphics driver... Um, recommendations do change when you do that. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so I think that's it with the questions today. Um, yeah, there's nothing else in here. But if you do think of any more, go ahead and type them into the GoToWebinar poll that you have after this. Um, and also mention any of the, uh, the future sessions you want to see. That's definitely very important. Um, the more often we see a particular session, the, the further up the pipeline we do put it. Um, and it does get you know, placed on higher priority for us to do here in the next couple of weeks. So next week, we're going to be doing a Fusion 360 um, modeling and simulation uh, webcast here. And then uh, you know, a couple of weeks after, we're going to be doing uh, an advanced steel one. So if you were here for the last one Jose did, or Jose was also joining us on, on this frame generator, we did do a little bit of introduction to advanced steel um, AutoCAD. So uh, if you do want to see that full presentation, it's going to be up here in a few weeks. You'll definitely get that email since you're all subscribed to AVA. So, um, with that, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and go some place Pokemon Go. Or not. No, we're not going to play Pokemon Go. We'll do that after work. But uh, <laughs> you guys all have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.